Hey yo, my mouth's on fire. Okay, Phineas and Ferb are coming back. Yes, we all have questions, but we saw Disney Plus tweeted about it. We saw Dan Pavelmeyer post about it on. Well, I saw it on his TikTok. Either way, the series is coming back for like, what did it say? Forty, like forty something episodes, which means like two parts for each thing, two parters. Maybe, um, unless they do some like special, that means like eighty little story bites that we're getting for this. Like, I'm assuming they're bringing back all the act. Sorry, all the same voice actors. Um, maybe throwing in some uh, Easter eggs with the with the new series. What Hamster and Gretel, Hamster and something. I don't remember what it's called. I don't know. Let's see what this channel is. What Second Dimension? Let's see what their thoughts are about this. So no, it's not! Summer's back, baby! <laughs> End of a story. And this is once again proven true because Phineas and Ferb was just renewed for 40 more episodes. 40, right. man. All new Phineas and Ferb. And be aware that it's still very early in development because no deals have been signed with actors or writers for production and everything is still moving forward on Hamster and Gretel. So I'm just gonna... Dang it, man. Dang it. I would figure that as soon as they announced this, they were like, okay, I figured, like, don't announce this unless the ball is already rolling. Like, you don't even have contracts signed with, like, voice actors and stuff. Granted, they all are, like, I figure all of them, the original voice actors would have been willing to do this anyway. I'm just like, hey, why are they not already, like, on board legally with this thing and that's my concern let's get right past the intro today so we can talk about what all this means from the press release sent to multiple news outlets here are the key things to know first dan poppenmeyer the original co-creator and voice of doofenshmirtz is the only confirmed person returning this was a long-term deal with disney television animation to keep dan around and not only will he be making 40 new episodes of phineas and ferb but he'll be working on the officially greenlit hamster and gretel season two and developing live action content for the channel could this mean we get a live-action Phineas and Ferb Disney Channel original movie? I wouldn't. Yeah, but no, Disney please no. Flying around with different types of live-action shows on the channel, and I'd certainly rather have whatever's in Dan. I haven't watched any new content. <laughs> I've watched any new content from Disney. Hopefully, I'm like, channels. I wish I could say I'm like, I don't know. Excited for this, but there's just so much we don't know. I want this to be great so badly, and wish everyone working on it nothing but the best. But let's talk about the unknowns and why they give me pause. First, Swampy is- When it comes, oh man, when it comes to like new Disney content, cause a lot of it, I'm assuming still comes out on Disney Channel, maybe initially, but you know, I only see it on Disney Plus and I see it like pop up in the new feed, but I'm like, I don't even give it really, I don't really give it a chance, not really, just because I'm like, well, it's, pro it's not intended for me, so I probably won't like it. Plus, if it's just like a spinoff of something else, it's probably worse. So I'm just like, what the heck, I'll just leave it alone. But man, Swampy might not be back. Is it confirmed to be coming back as a creator? He's working on Hey AJ for Disney Junior right now. His own what is that? He's also branched out quite a bit and hasn't been as tied to Disney as Dan, despite coming back for Candy's Against the Universe to produce. The fact that they announced this revival without Swampy attached isn't the best sign, as so much of what made Phineas and Ferb itself was the duo working together. Still though, it's not like it's impossible for Swampy to return, though his lack of engagement with any posts on social media about the announcement is troubling. However, he does lend his voice for Hamster and Gretel, so I'm personally not worried about a major monogram recast, or really any major recasts. It's the creative aspect that has me cautious. Mm. Second, where is this airing? Will this be for Disney Channel proper, like Hamster and Gretel? Or a Disney Plus exclusive like Candace Against the Universe. Did See, but didn't didn't they maybe season one just released way sooner than I thought. Cause I'm pretty sure Hamster and Gretel's already on Disney Plus. Like, maybe it initially comes out on Disney Channel and then they bring it to Plus. Which I think is fine. Unless they like, you know, if they release weekly on Disney Channel, then they just release them weekly on Disney Plus as well, like synchron, like 
synchronized. Uh, I feel like there's not like a. I don't feel like there, you have to choose between those two, especially with something like this. Disney Plus Twitter account makes it sound like they'll be simultaneous, similar to how most Disney Channel shows are now. Yeah. This is important, not because I'm worried about Disney binge dropping episodes, those days are thankfully in the past, <laughs> but because an episode on streaming and cable are completely different things. That's true. What exactly does 40 episodes mean in today's streaming world? 40 11 minute episodes is equal to 20 episode pairs, aka one original season of Phineas and Ferb. Mm. Is this what they mean? How would the extended length episodes be counted? If the new series is for Disney Channel, the episode count is less of a concern, as 40 episodes would likely mean 40 22 minute segments, which would be in line with the original show. But still, we don't know. If I had to take a personal guess, I'd say it'll probably be a Disney Plus original airing sometime afterwards on TV, like Monsters at Work is now. I feel like this follows hmm. the pattern of I didn't even know that it did that. where nostalgia would drive people to streaming, which is their ultimate endgame at the moment. And nostalgia! Still have Disney Channel proper cameoing Phineas and Ferb characters by season two to cross. <laughs> the Third, what's the story reason to revisit Phineas and Ferb in their own show? If we're going back to the original summer for more fill in the gaps content like Phineas Against the Universe, I'll be more concerned. It truly feels like that chapter of the Phineas and Ferb story doesn't have two full seasons. Go to high school. Not to mention all the other shows <laughs> in the series have pushed the timeline forward, with Milo Murphy's Law taking place in the year after, and Hamster and Brettle presumably taking place beyond that. Mm. I think a part of me just can't imagine full episodes of Phineas she and Ferb. She was tossing them in around. With how awful the first third of Candace Against the Universe looked. Dang. <laughs> she, he's not wrong, though. If this was a new summer or era of the show, or if there's a clear time gap, I can understand it. But putting entire retcon seasons that look so visually different into the original summer just feels wrong to me, especially with the last day of summer still serving as the definitive ending. Yeah. I like I'd love this series to take place in the next summer. We know from Actor Age that they keep doing essentially the same thing summer after summer, so why not another? The only question then becomes, what do you do with Doof? Canonically, Doof is in something of a weird place. He turns good officially at the end of the last day of summer. Then you have Doof 101, where he becomes a teacher. Then the Alka Files, where he becomes an agent. Then you have Milo Murphy's Law, where he learns that he will someday become Professor Time, the world-renowned inventor of time travel. Professor Time! I honestly... Time no see, bro, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I honestly forgot that he did that. Like, I remembered up to the agent. I didn't watch all of Milo Murphy's Law. At least I don't really remember watching it. So, like, <laughs> the fact that they kept him in and then they had him do this kind of ridiculous uh, I feel like Milo Murphy's was like coming out when I was near the ed end of high school no I can't remember the exact year because it came out like the year after Phineas and Ferb ended I'm pretty sure and by that time I was like I'll, I was watching at least the start of it but I was like eh but in starting that journey, he lives with Milo and his family, and that's where we left him at the end of that show. Then, of course, Dan has teased again and again that Doof will be appearing in Hamster and Gretel this season, which <laughs> knows how that'll fit into the story. I bet money that at least one of these Doof stories ends up retconned by the new seasons of Phineas and Ferb. So, if Phineas and Ferb picks up in a new season, will Doof be good? Canonically, according to Dan, Phineas and Ferb's Christmas episode implies that Doof relapses on his journey to becoming good again. What? So it's that he could could still be evil for an entire another summer, even if I wouldn't love that choice personally. He but relapses. If is Phineas and Ferb for a new generation, I just can't see how you could break the formula with Doof being entirely good. While it worked for Candace Against the Universe to not play into Doof's evil tendencies, the show in its normal form needs Doof versus Perry as a conflict. Another That's thing is true. That wanted to bring characters from it's like the heart and soul of the show, Loki. It becomes much more difficult being in the original summer. As Milo hadn't met Zack yet, and Hamster and Gretel hadn't got their powers yet since that series takes place during the school year. Here's something that gets me excited no matter when the show is set, though. The opportunity to follow up on forgotten plot lines from the main series. Stacy knowing oh. Harry's why Monty and Vanessa didn't work out. Meet mm. me in St. Louis. Will we finally find out Meet me in St. Louis! Yes! I'm just a guy who's a sucker for the sounds of the Or Phineas <laughs> and Ferb Star Wars. Finally returning to the second dimension to resolve that cliffhanger? Ooh. I hope they go for the obvious sense to start with, and then work on new ideas from there. Because in Venture-wise, Phineas and Ferb was really running out of steam by the end of the original run. 
Maybe they can also flesh out some of the characters' journeys towards where they end up in Actor Age, such as Irving joining the OWCA. Also, if they do choose to set this in a second summer, I really hope they take the opportunity to provide closure to some of the Milo Murphy's Law characters. Dan has discussed a three-way crossover between the Dwampyverse shows, and I think now it's only a matter of time before it becomes reality. He just called it the Dwampyverse. One episode of Milo Murphy's Law is essentially just a retcon of Phineas and Ferb episode, so who's to say an episode of Phineas and Ferb couldn't be a Milo Murphy's Law episode? Hey, could you guys use a blowtorch and some peanut butter? How can we not have- Hey! First of all, though, I really want closure for Milo out of this situation. It's the show I started my channel discussing, and it truly is my favorite part of this universe, even if I can acknowledge that Phineas and Ferb is an objectively better and more popular show. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone, I wish you the best of luck. I imagine this is a pretty monumental task to live up to the show's legend. It's just a lot of pressure. <laughs> and hey, if anyone watching this works on the show and knows they need an animatic editor or a lore consultant, or even just a cameo voice, hit me up. I'd be incredibly happy to lend my talents. To Gotta shoot your shot, bro. So that's all I have for today's trip to the second dimension. Be sure. Bro, I'm on. Honestly, it doesn't even matter. Because for people like me, in the age group, and just because of how I am, they got me from the get-go. They kept me in the show the entire time. I watched every single episode, every single week, on repeat, all the movies, all that stuff. I literally, I think in my closet somewhere, I have like a Perry like flag. Don't even know why. I think I saw them live. That was really weird, but I mean, I think I did. Um... And they made me a lifelong fan, right? Made me a lifelong fan. So regardless of what they put out, I will obviously critique because I can tell that it's like not the same because uh, I noticed the same thing about Candace Against the Universe. But like, I'm still going to watch it. <laughs> regardless, I'm still going to watch it, bro. Because I mean, like, it's so, it's such a good like just remember like the nostalgia takes over at that point it's such a good show like and it was such a big part of my life in general so I'm like yeah I, I have to regardless so yeah I agree with Second Dimension Man over here so shout out to him link for his video in the description and all that like comment subscribe click the bell link in the description all that good stuff but yeah